Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the Rat Shop. Today, we're going to get back on this finesse jerkbait rod and see if we can get close to getting it finished. So stick around. All right, a few things left to do. Uh, one, since you saw this rod last, I put uh, the final coat of finish on the carbon fiber grips and the under area where we're going to put labels and hook keeper. So next thing is to get it off my blank extender um, balance and put the butt cap on. And then we will start wrapping guides. So let's go. I'm going to pull it out of my power wrapper here that I, I use it as a stand more than anything else. Um, let's get my actual stand down so I can work on this handle. Flip the rod around. Got my extender out. I'm gonna check the balance. So it's pretty close to where I want it to be. May add a little bit to the butt to lighten it up just a bit. Um, maybe not. Well, we'll see. Let's um. Let's get some materials down here. Paper plate, some rod paste, a couple popsicle sticks. Got my little pick with the spatula on the end of it. We need the cap, which is here. That's the hook keeper. We're going to need it in a bit. So there's the cap. It's going to go on right here. Oh, forgot to move you guys down. Hang on a second. Like I said, this is a working rod shop with some cameras in it. This is not a film studio, although I try. And we've got some improvements coming. Okay. So now you guys can see what I'm doing. Maybe. So we've got the butt cap. I probably... Uh, kind of torn. Yeah, that needs a little bit. And I probably wouldn't add any weight to this if this was a normal length handle where the real seat was out here. It would be a lot more balanced because as it is, it's balanced. It balances, you know, right in there, which if this real seat was at a normal length instead of being as short as it is because it's the short jerkbait rod. I probably wouldn't add any weight to it, but I want this tip to be very light feeling. So let's find some weight. I don't fish lead anymore. I use exclusively I don't really fish lead anymore, period. So I have a lot of it left over. And I find it all the time online for cheap. So I'll buy it to use for balancing these rods. I mean, I, I always fish tungsten. So, so here's that's about where I would like it to balance. Well, with this short a handle, we're going to need to add more than I would normally just to get it to balance properly. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm gonna put my hand, I wanna put it in my hand, so I'm just gonna tape these in for the moment. Oh, 
Ooh, yeah, that's much better. Still just a ghost tip heavy, but I'm good with that. Okay. Ooh, let's get it back in there. I'm put my stash of lead away. Okay, now to the business of actually embedding these weights in the butt. So first thing I do is I make a little tape ball. And that just keeps the epoxy that I put in it where I want it. Keeps the lead from sliding forward when I'm doing the install and then rattling later. Got the drop seats today. That'll do what I want it to do. Alrighty. Put some alcohol down for cleaning up. Paper towels. And we're all set. So let's mix up a little bit of paste epoxy. This is the UB40 Quick Bond 10 minute paste. What I use the most. A quick mix. Now you need to really look for is a consistent color. Once you get rid of the streaking and you don't have the white and the darker pink anymore you have basically a cotton candy pink you're ready to go so what i'll do is i'll put just a little bit on the inside of the blank i'm going to take my tape ball and i'm going to stuff it inside the blank a little too far but that'll be okay Next, I'm going to put quite a bit of paste inside of the blank itself. Alright, we're going to take the first one and stuff it in. More epoxy. Second one, stuff it in, and then some clean up some of this excess, pushing it in as well. And then I will put a liberal amount on the center of the cap and I'm going to just wet this outside edge and then we'll stick it on. Now, clean up time. First shot of cleaning up, I'm just going to do it dry. And I'm pulling the paper towel to me. So there's always clean paper towel 
and you're not smearing a lot of epoxy. Now, let's push it tight again. It's going to squish out some more. And turn it just to make sure we've got a good even coat. And we do. Take a little alcohol this time. You don't want a lot of uh, this alcohol on your thread finish epoxy here on the grips because it does make it a little soft. And that is clean. One final thing is I'm going to put some masking tape on it. to hold it in place. Now I'm going to stand it in a corner for 10 minutes and let that paste cure and then we'll be back to start with the guides. And we're back. So uh, it's been about 15 minutes. The glue is set on the butt cap that we glued on a few, you know, 15 minutes ago. Um, I've got it back in the power wrapper. I've got it in wrap mode. Um, and we're going to start with the hook keeper right here. This is the Keegan ALX. I'm going to use black as a contrast over the red for the hook keeper. And let's get to wrapping. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to check my tension, which is a bit tight. And there's really no way to explain other than you want your thread tension as tight as you can get it without it pulling the rod back around, especially if you're hand wrapping, that's just a little tougher. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pin this tag in here. Back behind the reel seat, put my glasses on so I can see. And what I want to do is come around. And the tension is still too tight. Let's pin it again. Just want to slack that. Now, I'm going to start going around. I'm going to go over the hook keeper to really hold it down tight on the blank. I've got it taped in there pretty loose. But I want to come across here so I can hold the foot down. Still see a little bit of a gap on the tip of that hook keeper, but I think we can jump up on that no problem. We're going to come out in front of it about four or five wraps here. And that's about where we're going to start wrapping. Got my wrap started. I'm gonna take my little shoe tool here. I'm gonna push this back tight. Get it nice and neat as we're coming up right at the toe here. You can see we're about one wrap away from the toe. Now I'm going to jump over up on the toe and make a couple wraps with that obvious gap in there. So there's four wraps. Now what I want to do is I'm going to pull this back down. So as I continue to wrap, so pulling these four back tight.
And now we've got that toe covered perfectly. So let's go ahead and release the tag in here. Got my nippers. <clears throat> and it jumped. Wasn't paying attention. We're going to cut this loose and out of the way here. And then we're going to keep burnishing down to kind of even this wrap back up. It's got a bit of a wobble to it. Especially right there on this side of the guide or the hook keeper. And then we'll wrap it on out. And we're getting close to the end of our wrap. And right now we'll put a thread pull in. Pull this tape out of the way as we turn. Again, it crossed. And that's it. So we'll cut that loose. I'm going to pin it here down to the blank with my finger. Pull a little slack. Cut it. Drop it down through this loop. There's the wrap. I'm going to pull a little tension on the tag end here. Do any of my most of my well I'm gonna do most of my burnishing now before I cut that tag end off just in case I need to tighten it up a little bit now fresh razor blade and that one is not very fresh First one right here. All right, so I'm going to take the razor blade and I'm just going to lay it flat on the blank and I'm going to pull the thread to it and it nipped it right off. Now we got a little bit of a burr there, but we'll get that taken care of with a little burnishing. And if that doesn't do it, we'll get that end off. with a lighter right before we put the finish on it. I don't want to do it now because I'll go through and check all of them and then we just want to check it for straight. And it is right where it's supposed to be. Okay, now we'll move ahead to the stripper guide. Now we're going to switch threads. The last time I'm going to use the black, we're going to go to the the Fuji is a 606 metallic red and it can be a pain to use. So we'll see how this goes today. I'll get it in my thread carriage here. Now you may have to adjust your spool tension again because this red, well any metallic really, um, it's a coating on the outside of the thread and it has a tendency to be, at least feel a little thicker, it's not as smooth. So you, you may have too much tension, which that's pretty close. Okay, now we're ready for the stripper guide. I'll check my alignment, it needs to come up just a hair. Okay.
Pull this black out of the way. Okay, so we're going to start with this low end, bottom end of the double footed stripper guide. So I'm going to pin it down just like I did the hook keeper. And I'm going to run it up and over the front foot and then pull it across. And I'm going over the rear foot again to hold it down. I'll come out about four wraps and pull back straight, cross over, and start my wrap. Alright, so I've got five wraps in front of the toe of that guide foot, and I'm going to tighten these up. And the same as I did on the hook keeper, I'm going to jump up on the foot a little bit, a little high. It's getting a little out of whack here. safely up on the on the foot of the guide now and I'm neatening these guides as I go okay now we're going to pull the tag in loose pull it back around to a dirty side of the blank and I'm going to nip it with my nippers Finish this wrap up. Now with this metallic thread you really need to keep it tight because it shows every gap, especially a bright color on a dark blank. Alright, now we're running up close to the rubber band here, and I'll take my razor blade, and I just want to pinch that rubber band down to the corner, and it disappeared. <clears throat> Do a few more turns. Let's take that gap out of there. And let's put a thread pull on. Finish up the wrap. We'll stop there, pin it, cut it, rubber through the loop, pull a little bit of tension. And there you go. Uh, looks pretty good. So we're just going to lay the razor knife on the blank so you don't cut into your thread work and then you're just going to pull and it pops right out of there. There you go. There's the bottom end. All right, so we'll flip around and we'll do the top.
All right, let's get going here. Come across. Out in front of the foot. About four wraps. Cross over your tag in to lock it in place. And that jumped over. Somewhere. Uh, right there. Alright, so I'm going to pull some tension back on my spool. I'm going to work on this a little bit to neaten it up and get it lined up where I want it. Okay, we're right at the toe of the guide foot. Now we'll jump up on the toe. And we climbed up it successfully there. We're just two. Okay, let's get the tag end out of the way. Tighten this up a bit, get those gaps out now. bit and jumped again. The joys of working with metallic. This metallic thread is beautiful on a finished rod but I don't like working with it just for this exact reason. It is very finicky especially on x-ray blank where you have the ribs There we go. All right, now we're going to take a rubber or a razor blade and nip that rubber band again. Just take the corner and push down on it, and it pops out of the way. Let's put a thread pull in. Now, this time the thread pull goes in the opposite way. You always want the knot away from the guide. Nip it. Oh, got it. I held it down with the wrong finger, so I'm going to switch. Find my loop. And there we go. Tighten it up a bit. Check these wraps. Make sure we don't have any gaps in anywhere. Okay, razor blade flat on the blank. I 
and then we're just gonna pull and that one left a little fuzz and I got it to disappear so that worked out pretty good all right single foot guides single foot guides I do just a bit differently I should I showed you guys the locking wrap I do on single footed guides a couple videos ago but I'll show you again again it's not necessary it's just a little added safety to keep the guide from being knocked out in a rod locker or in a tube or when it's leaning up against something else it just adds a little bit of safety factor to keep these small single foots from just you know accidentally getting knocked out mostly when you're not fishing is usually some other time is when these get knocked out so start to wrap the same gonna come up behind it close cross over and you can see maybe that there is a little bit of a gap between the blank and the guide foot and if you get this located properly coming over with the right tension you can make it go away and that's the whole reason for crossing over with the thread is to hold that guide foot down tight to the blank until you get your wrap started now this is the x-ray blank and this is the only problem I have with it. I've talked about this a little bit in the past, but you can see it's trying to catch these ribs. You can feel because it's not a sanded blank. Gary believes that if you, the unsanded blank is crisper, uh, more sensitive, and I agree with him, but this is where the issue is for me, is wrapping them. They're a pain to wrap, but they, these blanks are so sensitive. All right, so we're f about four wraps there to the toe. I'm gonna come up high on the, on the foot of the toe there. Put a couple wraps in high. I'm going to start burnishing everything back tight. As I go around. And now we have the toe. We are successfully on the toe of the guide. one little gap there like I said with the metallic it's hard to get it perfect but you got to try and with the x-ray they want to stay on one side of the other of these ribs you got to really put a little more effort in to get these things burnished before you finish it because moving it after getting rid of a gap is more challenging okay now we're up pull tag in loose and pull it back to the dirty side and clip it off close all right we'll get busy on the rest of this wrap let's get rid of our rubber band about five wraps away now as we get closer to the tip of the blank I'm gonna put more wraps in for my pull through only because the smaller the diameter you get the less it holds or the worse that it holds which doesn't matter once you get finished on it it's just in the wrapping process 
the smaller diameter end is a little harder to keep the wrap tight until you get the finish on it. All right, so this is where we get to what I call the locking wrap. And this is not something I came up with, I saw it years ago. I don't even know what they called it, but everybody does it a little different. So what I'm gonna do is where I would normally stop, which is here, I'm about one wrap from where I would normally stop a wrap on the foot. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump behind the guide ring these next two wraps <clears throat> so now I just went behind it I'm going to do that again around behind it and then I'm going back over top, but I need to get rid of that gap first. Back over the top. Come outside. <clears throat> and then I'll end my wrap. This one burns down. Just want to make sure that gap here isn't so obvious. That side looks great. Cut it a little bit there. Now we're in the wrap up. Lay flat. Cut it out of the way. There we go. That's the locking wrap. Now I'm going to wrap the rest of these single foot guides exactly the same. When we come back, we're going to put it back on the static load tester, just checking the angles and uh, your line transition from the stripper guide through the transition guide into your first running guide, which we have, you know, cocked over about 10 degrees left. And we'll just make sure it looks good before we start epoxy wood. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, finally, got all the wraps done. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up against a white background and I'm just going to eyeball my running guides, trying to split the difference of the guide ring across the blank itself. So you'll have, a, you know, the bigger the guide, it's a little easier to do, but if you're looking down, and I got one that's a little out of whack. That looks pretty good. Now it's time to put it back in. The load tester so I can just check my transition from the spiral wrap. So here's my load tester. I'm going to clamp it to the end of my table, like that, the blank buried back in here. Okay. 
take my guide alignment tool that I've modified, put some yellow braid, and put it in the reel seat like it's a rock, or put it in the reel seat like it's a reel. <clears throat> if you don't have one of these, you can just put a reel on it, but these guide alignment tools are like five bucks. It's very worth the investment. I'll just string it up real quick. Sometimes my hands don't work so well. Can't really feel my fingers today. Been a long week on the road with the construction company. A lot of time driving this week. Got it successfully strung here. Let's get it back on top. I'll grab my other clamp that I used to hold to pressure on the blank. Get a little pressure on it. Don't need as much this time as when we were doing the original alignment. I'm not worried about the end so much as I am just the transition area. Alright, so I'm going to check my stripper guide and it is this line I'm gonna move you guys down here now this line if I roll this you might be able to see it is not coming straight down the blank into the stripper guide so I'm going to rotate my stripper guide off axis the opposite way of the spiral just to get it centered and that looks pretty good Got a nice transition around the blank I'm going to roll this one a little bit not too much roll this one down here Okay. All right, guys. That's it for the wrapping. Um, everything is ready for epoxy. I'm going to print out my labels next, and I'll take you along for that ride. Don't go away. All right, guys. I've moved you down here close, so you can see how I do these labels. I run the Pearl Label 360, which you can no longer get. Um, there is a comparable one. I'll try to put the link down in the description. But it runs these thermal tapes. And I know the lighting is not great. I'm trying to keep the glare down on the screen. I also run the Label Editor Professional software free from Epson. So how this works is you're going to load these tapes in your label maker. And it's connected to the laptop. And I'm going to open a file. And I'll go to my label file. And then I'll scroll down to NFC. I have all these stored, or I have most of them stored at least. NFC 6406, which is this blank, the SJ703. And there's my stored label. You can go in and edit, change whatever you need. You can change the sizes. This is going to fit on a half-inch tape. I've loaded the gold on clear. So let's print it and see what happens. All right, this is the first time I printed with this laptop. My old laptop died about an hour ago. So I've been trying to get this one up and running. Let's we'll see if it works. Looks good so far. And here we go. And there is the blank information. Now I'll open another file and get my label that I built in Adobe. Let's see, let's open another file. FDX graphic port small, I believe is that's the one I want. There we go. And you can you can customize this like this. I can shrink this into smaller 
which I think I'm going to for this rod. And let's print it and see what it looks like. And there we go. I'll just have to trim it up a little bit. But that's the label. The only label that I still need to make is the name of the client which i'll do that in a little bit but let's go back over to the rod bench all right we're back at the rod bench this is dead laptop that died just an hour ago it's about 14 years old it was time it's now in the trash box fortunately i had a backup so we have labels that we've printed now and I'm not gonna put them on at the moment. I'm gonna get some of these, get the curve and the wrinkle out of it. And here's the trick to doing this. I have a piece of, or I have a part of a roll of two inch, just painter's tape. And I have just a piece of paper taped it. And then another piece of tape on the end of it. What I'm gonna do is put these in here against the curve. And just close the paper down on them and I'll let this sit for a couple hours a lot of times I'll print them the night before and they'll sit overnight but when you open this back up they'll lay flat on the table and in the next video we're going to be putting the labels on and finishing up the epoxy on the guide wraps and hopefully completing this rod all together so as always guys thanks for watching I'll see you next time